Hello everyone, today's video is about the patch 6.03 where we have huge killjoy nerf, huge raise nerf, but also haircuts. Welcome to development patch note 603. There's a lot of changes. I'll be very happy to break it down for you guys and keep you updated on how this changes the metagame. So, Let's read it out. Hello, Joellen here. Thank you for all of your feedback on Swift Play. We're happy to hear how much though you love this mode. Additionally, we've got a Killjoy and Race update and even more bug fixes. First one is Killjoy. With the Chamber recent balance and the increased reliability of Killjoy's lockdown ult, she has recently sprung up as the premier Sentinel agent in-game. When we took on the system systemic damage and health interactions in patch 5.12, we decided not to reduce Killjoy's turret health given her place in the ecosystem at the time. Given her place today, we're making the changes below. So I think this turret change should have been happening like months ago, it doesn't really change anything right now. Um, in, in retrospect, when it comes to like how the Killjoy ultimate just kind of wrecks everything, right? Because the Killjoy ultimate with the 200 HP buff that it got in the last patch makes it immune to aftershock, uh, but changes the way the, the interacts with the auto utility. It boosted the Killjoy to a premier position, but also the chamber just got shot on. So yeah, Killjoy literally has like 100% pick rate. Or gonna, probably in Brazil, it's going to have like 95% pick rate. That would be my assumption. We're going to check after the entire tournament will be done. But I do think Killjoy is going to have like around 95% pick rate. But it, I don't think it's a terrible, terrible thing. Because there's just no way that Cypher will have a good competition with Killjoy on almost any map apart from Breeze, which is now not in the map pool, right? So it's just the sentences are so different. Uh, anyway, the thing is, with the turret change, we have its health decreased by f by 25. So even five, five health difference would make a huge difference because when you think about it, Vandal deals 120 in three bullets, right? So it was not able to destroy the turret with three bullets. Now it is, which is a huge change, but also Phantom now is able to do it in three bullets, because each Phantom bullet is going to be 35 in most cases, which destroys again in three bullets. It allows you to not only destroy the turret faster, but also preserve your health, because you're going to be more reliably doing it with one burst. Before, in many situations, you were bursting a turret, you missed one bullet, you got 12 damage back, and you had to re reset the recoil and shoot it again, which wasted your time, wasted your health. This is a huge change. It's not only that you're able to destroy it with one less bullet, but first and foremost, it changes the way that the timings are gonna work when you're dueling the turret. And now, when it comes to pistol rounds, that is also a huge change, because now the turret will be destroyed by one less bullet from the Ghost, and for the Classic as well. Classic deals 26 body shot damage, right? So it's four bullets from the Classic, but also four bullets from the Ghost. So it equalizes the position from both guns, which is not something that happened before uh, with, 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 with uh, Classic and the Ghost. So this is a huge change for the turret. Now, when it comes to the lockdown, that is absolutely huge. The lockdown point increase from 7 to 8 makes sense now. I don't know why it wasn't increased when it got buffed. When it got buffed to 200 HP, it's kind of weird because it seems like Riot knows that they nerfed Chamber to the ground. So that allows the other Sentinels to thrive. So that not only they destroyed the competition, but buffed the players that were under, uh, sorry, the agents that were uh, uh, like essentially killed by Chamber. And they thought it's not going to change, but I, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Like, for me, the lockdown should be 8 points in the last patch, not now. Like, right now in Brazil, players should be already playing with the 8 orb ultimate, but they are not. Which is huge for the metagame, and is huge for the way we're going to see the games play out. Because when, a lock when an ultimate goes from 7 to 8, it changes everything. It not only allows you to... Um, more, less reliably plan on when you will have the lockdown ready because most maps have two orbs, right? So you have to rely on planting more and you have to rely on getting more kills, which allows you to essentially, when, when, a, when an ultimate goes from to 7 to 8, you get, on average, one ultimate less per half. 
it's that big of a change because it changes the timings of how typically a game plays out unless you're getting a pop off right so unless the kills your player we're gonna get was gonna get a lot of kills this is gonna be a huge huge nerf now that also changes the way that we on a, we're gonna value the ultimate because when you go into my compendium we have the or priority and let's talk about attack and defense for attack i met uh oi. Let me mute this notification. For attack, <clears throat> I don't think the all priority changes a lot for Killjoy because it's still insanely powerful attack tool to clear a site. And there's not a lot of competition in the same slot. But when it comes to defense, eight orbs on defense are very tough to get. And typically also Sentinels are actually playing retake so they don't get that many opportunities to get kills. And when you were, if you were watching Brazil, there's a lot of saving going around nowadays. And that's going to be a trend going forward. And because of that, it's going to be even harder to get ultimates on defense because you're saving more. And when you're saving more, you're not getting orbs. So the ultimates that are eight orbs are going to be even more challenging to get. Because of that... I'm going to change the orb priority from Killjoy from 5 to 10, but also that is a slight buff to Harbour, who is now has a higher priority than Killjoy, because, I mean, this is not a huge change or anything, it's just, you know, context, right? But I do think now Harbour makes much more sense on retake, because it's just less, sorry, more reliable in the retakes than an ultimate that can be destroyed and interrupted, but it's also easier to gather. So... Um, that's my assumption when it comes to the value of the ultimate, but on attack, this ultimate is still pretty good, right? It's like not on pair with KO, Fade, or, or, or well, kind of over breach. Actually, you know what? No, we have to change it. Like, there's no way this is on the par with breach. So we're actually lowering the ult from 8 to 7 out of 10 as well on attack just because of that. I would rather have the bridge ultimate than the killjoy ultimate on attack. Now let's go back to the patch notes. We have a huge change for rays. We feel the duration of Boombot has led to a larger recon footprint than we felt was healthy. It's kind of weird that this wasn't changed for two and a half years. In regards to the ability's secondary output, we are decreasing the amount of space the ability can cover in order to sharpen Boombot as a tool race and her team can use to follow up around angles. Now, the change is from 10 seconds to five and a half. Like, it's crazy, man. Who on earth thought this is... I don't know. Yo, Riot, what's going on here? This is like half of the time. It's crazy. So to illustrate that... I'm gonna go back to bind, right? I know this map is not in the map pool right now, but this is one of the most commonly used lineup of, of rays. Essentially, this is, this is butchering it in half, right? So when you're doing this lineup, you're gonna have half of the same time, right? From 10 seconds, you go to five seconds, right? Let's take a look. This is the lineup that goes into hookah. Right? Everyone was using this. And when it goes here, it bounces like this, here, checks all the angles. Right? And the thing is, this is 10 seconds duration. When you're gonna be doing it from the same spot, and it's gonna take 5 seconds, and I'm gonna be generous here, it's gonna end up in this spot, right here. This is going to be 5 seconds. So let's show it on Vala Plant, how it looks there. This is going to be the lineup that uh, is happening on Bind. Right now you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 bounces essentially. This is 10 seconds long. But when the 5 seconds will be in game, this is the point where it ends. So you essentially don't clear anything. You don't clear any single angle in Hookah. That means that the race players, in general, will have to rework how they use any lineups. You're not able to use any lineups for the barrier. This changes everything how we play the game, because right now, when you are playing from this position, many race players were just standing here at the barrier, were using the lineup, and then they were rotating towards short or towards long. Here, like, there were many options, because you're able to use something to do create pressure on hookah, 
and then rotate away to a different direction. With this boom bot, there's no way of doing that. Five seconds, you're going to have to be more exposed. You're going to have to be a little bit more aware of using this because you're just going to waste time if you're going to be too safe by using this lineup from like a bouncy angle or something. So this is a huge, huge nerf. It's going to change the way that you play the game as a race completely, completely, because if you want to clear hookah now with those five seconds, you're going to be have to standing over here and you're most likely going to have to use a lineup that goes like this. So you're going to have to not only take a risk if someone is standing up close in this area, right? But you go, you're going to have to be a lot closer and be exposed to potential peaks. So this is a huge, huge nerf. Um, I think it's still good for the game, but I do think that five seconds is a little bit too harsh. But we'll see how it goes. Now, gameplay system updates. Adjusted the flying error graph to use worst case error represented as degrees from the aim direction. The graph now reports the worst case error degrees of possible bullet vector before it didn't account for the generation of the actual error vector. So now I'm going to act like I understood that very clearly and I don't need to read it five times. I assume it just shows the biggest number in the flying error. I actually use the flying error because it showcases to you, it showcases to you if you were actually moving during the shot or not because it shows the angle deviation of your, from your crosser. So if you want to learn, like by re-watching your duels, I would, I would um, recommend turning on the firing error because it showcases to you where you're stationary or not, which is very useful. Introduce a new setting, Operator Hold, which allows those of you in toggle mode to hold secondary fire to go into level two zoom. I personally play uh, with operator on hold, right? So when I when I have the gun equipped, I'm able to like be more dynamic because I can just swap in swap in and out from the uh, from the zoom. But I cannot go into zoom two without using a specific keybind. I have it on N, so I can go into level two. But th what this changes is when you're gonna go into sniper rifle aim, you're gonna go to toggle, and then you go back to toggle here. You're able to go into the secondary zoom, into, this, uh, into the higher magnification by using the mouse itself, which is a nice, nice change for the toggle players, but still nothing changed for the hold players like myself. Now, next one. We have a restored weapon zoom to pre-patch six-zero behavior and when transitioned from weapon equipped to zoom down aimed sights. No clue what that means, but uh, hey. Nice that they changed it, I think. Swift play, super nice that it stays. It's a very nice uh, game mode that should be permanent. I personally don't play it a lot. Like, almost at all. Because I just, li I just like playing competitive. But this is good for players who don't want to sacrifice 40 minutes of uh, to play unrated or competitive. They want to play the, the normal game over a shorter game. I'm very happy to see this staying in the game right now. Now, social updates. This is actually pretty big. Added real-time text evaluation, NA only to start to the agent select screen. Now, what is that? Real-time uh, real text evaluation is, in addition to our existing intervention, we are launching a new feature to begin muting players in chat who send disruptive text messages in-game. Interventions for disruptive text will now be applied sooner rather than later as we continue updating our system to evaluate more types of text communication. Uh, and this is right now only established for the English language. But in general, the, the idea is that they're going to be able to punish people who are disruptive in the text chat in almost real time without anyone looking at the, at the text in an uh, archive or a bot going through the archive when someone is detected, right? When someone is reported for being disruptive in the game, the bot doesn't wait till the end of the game because it can check it in the real time so that player can be instantly muted and then probably punished later after the game. Look, when it comes to tools battling toxicity, I'm all in. Do whatever you want, Riot. Punish the players that are toxic. I don't really mind that at all and i'm gonna be very happy if you just punish all of them instantly now bug fixes adjusted sage neon jet and euros height to fit within our standardized vertical range now this is something that um i was complaining a lot and we have a visualization visualization thank you to Shik who dug out those models huge changes this is why i mentioned the haircuts look at the top 
uh hello here, here we go look at the top of the screen the difference is huge. We have similar problems with Sova in the past, whose cape was visible before he was peaking. One of the main reasons why I stopped playing Sova. I, I kid you not. One of the main reasons why I didn't play Sova like two years ago is because whenever you were re-peaking, your, your opponent was, was getting a visual cue before you went out. It was horrible. They changed it after some time, but it really made, made me um, salty when it comes to playing Sova. Now, when it comes to playing those agents that have the higher height because of their haircuts, this is something that should have been done a long time ago, but hey, better later than, uh, than ever, right? But than never. Essentially, you will be able to hide in more places because your hair is not gonna stick out. This is actually a huge difference here for Sage. You can see also from the side, it's a huge change for the way that the hair looks like on the top, but it doesn't change anything from the, like, let's say, um, side view, right? Sage still has a very visible ponytail from the side view. Now, other agents are being affected as well. Neon also had a huge, huge haircut here, and she gets a trim. I feel like this is even a bigger change than the Sage one. I'm not sure if you guys agree, but visually, I do think that Neon was more egregious than actually the Sage. Now, other uh, agents that are getting this treatment is also Yoru. I learned this, this the, the hard way. In Icebox, in the kitchen, there's like a stack of two boxes, and I hid behind that, and before this patch was applied, there's literally like three hairs, that, that, like literally those three here, those three here streaks of hair are visible above that box. This is not gonna be happening anymore. So this is pretty nice. And from the side view, it doesn't really change much. And then we have Jet, who is doesn't get that much of a change, but it's still pretty nice. And from the side view, yeah, it doesn't change much as well, right? So very nice to see this change. I'm very happy that this uh, this is happening right now in the game. Those are all changes that are were actually very very much needed at some point. Now there's still some bug fixes. AI, such as Sky Seekers, will now travel through the Crouch Only connection on Pearl near the Defender spawn area. I'm assuming this also fixes the icebox and the tube section where the seekers could have also be bugged. Um, I don't know if this applies to the Yoru gate crash. We're going to have to check it. Maybe because they fixed this, it will also going to fix the Yoru TP. It's not an AI, but maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Um, then we have fixed a bug where Kayo would sometimes be able to move after being downed during null command. I'd never seen that bug. I'd never seen any KO crouch and and like crawl during the, the res, but I heard it was happening. Fix a bug on Fracture where a player could fall off and die if two players ride the zipline at the same time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, for sure it was funny. Fix a bug where disconnecting and reconnecting multiple times in a round could cause a duel on any map to incorrectly appear open or shut. I had this bug one time when my ISP was going crazy, so that's nice that they're fixing it. It wasn't happening a lot, but it was definitely an annoying one to see. Fix a bug where rapidly spamming the Marshall zoom button could cause the scope to get stuck cycling in and out. Yo, you know what? Maybe, maybe change the gun so it's not incentivized to go quickly into the zoom button because it's so good in the no scope right but yeah good change anyway that's it for today thank you for watching the breakdown and we're gonna see each other during the next video and now i'm gonna do the watch parties for brazil hi